Okay, we differentiated sine and cosine. Now we'll find the derivatives of tangent, cotangent, and secant and cosecant. And it turns out it's pretty easy. But let's just summarize real quick. The derivative of sine x is cosine x. And the derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. Using just those two facts, we can differentiate the tangent function. So this is what we're trying to find now, the derivative of the tangent function. And to do this, all you have to remember is that the tangent is sine over cosine. Tangent of x is sine x over cosine x. So the derivative of tangent x will be the derivative of sine x over cosine x. And we can do this because we know how to differentiate sine x, and we know how to differentiate cosine x, and we know how to differentiate a quotient. So we'll just apply the quotient rule here. So I'll think low d high minus high d low over low low. So low here is cosine x times the derivative of what's up top. That's the derivative of the sine function, which is also cosine x. So that's low d high minus high, that's sine x, times the derivative of what's down low. So the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine x all over the denominator squared, so all over cosine squared x. So notice we have a minus negative here, so the numerator here can be written like this, cosine squared x plus sine squared x over cosine squared x. Now don't make the algebra mistake of trying to cancel those. We can't cancel those because of the plus sign. We can only cancel uh, factors. But one thing that should uh, stare out at you is this, cosine squared x plus sine squared x. That's probably the most common and probably the most important trig identity. That's simply equal to 1. Cosine squared x plus sine squared x is equal to 1 for any value of x. So this is simply 1 over cosine squared x. That's the derivative of the tangent function. And remember that 1 over cosine, the reciprocal of cosine, is the secant function. So 1 over cosine squared is secant squared. So this is secant squared x. And either of these is the correct answer, but this is how it's most commonly written, secant squared x. The derivative of the tangent function is the secant function squared. Or we say the derivative of tangent x is secant squared x. Now with a similar technique, we can find the derivative of the cotangent function. So the derivative of the cotangent function will be the derivative of cosine x over sine x, because the cotangent function is cosine x over sine x. And we can apply the quotient rule to this. So we'll do low d high, derivative of cosine is negative sine minus high, that's cosine x, d low. And the derivative of the sine x is cosine x over the denominator squared. So let's simplify this a little bit. Up top we have negative sine squared x minus cosine squared x all over sine squared x. Now you can probably see in your head that what we have up top is negative 1. If you don't see that, I'll just factor out the negative 1. We have negative 1 times sine squared x plus cosine squared x over sine squared x. And again, this step I would typically do mentally in my head, but the sine squared x plus cosine squared x is simply 1. So we end up with negative 1 over sine squared x. And 1 over the sine function is the cosecant function. So 1 over sine squared is cosecant squared. So this is negative cosecant squared x. And that's how it's most commonly remembered. The derivative of the cotangent function is the negative cosecant squared function, or the negative cosecant function squared. Now while we're at it, let's differentiate the secant function. The derivative with respect to x is the secant of x. Excuse me, the derivative with respect to x of the secant of x. Well, secant is 1 over cosine. So this is the derivative with respect to x of 1 over cosine x. And applying the 
the quotient rule here is pretty easy because this one up top makes some things simplify pretty nicely. So the derivative of the quotient right here, we have low d high, and the derivative of the top there is just zero, minus high d low. And the derivative of my cosine function was negative sine. And all of this is over the denominator squared, so over cosine squared x. So what is this? We have a minus negative sine x. So I have sine x over cosine squared x. And that's most commonly written like this. Uh, sine over one of these cosines is a tangent, and then the other cosine in the denominator is secant. So this is commonly written as secant x tangent x. The derivative of the secant function is secant x tangent x. So that's my answer. And um, one more, the cosecant function. So let's take the derivative of the cosecant of x. Well, cosecant, remember, is 1 over the sine function. So the derivative of the cosecant function is the derivative of 1 over sine of x. And if we apply the quotient rule there, we get low d high minus high d low. And of course, that goes away because we've multiplied by 0. And all this is over the denominator squared. So I have negative cosine x over the sine of x squared. And this cosine divided by one of those sines is a cotangent. And the other sine x down there in the denominator is a cosecant. So this becomes negative cosecant x cotangent x. And that's how it's commonly remembered. The derivative of the cosecant function is negative cosecant x cotangent x. So let's just write all this down uh, just in summary of what we've done here. The derivative of sine x is cosine x. The derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. And the derivative of tangent of x is secant squared x. And then in the right-hand column, the derivative of the cosecant function is negative cosecant x tangent x, or negative cosecant x cotangent x. The derivative of the secant function is secant x tangent x. And the derivative of the cosecant function is negative cosecant squared x. And these show up a lot. It's worth com committing these to memory. They're, um, they're relatively easy to figure out. If you forget, you can uh, do a quick diff uh, differentiate these quickly, uh, most of the time using the quotient rule. But it's a good idea to go ahead and memorize these. And so when you need one, you can just recall it very quickly.